this, this is probably going to be an unpopular thing to say, um, but I'll say it because I believe it. Um, the only way I think we're ever going to effectively be able to confront uh, this kind of terrorism um, is to take away uh, the justification or the motivation of people who are not already sort of committed uh, radical individuals who believe that what they're doing is justified and they're not afraid to die. You know, the Taliban fighters, you know, always say, you know, we love death as much as you love life. Um, but a lot of these people who do these attacks, so something happened in their life somewhere, uh, similar to what happens with school shootings here, uh, you know, what happened to Columbine. I, I liken a lot of these guys to uh, people who go through some kind of period where they're lost in life and then they're falling. Who catches you when you fall? Um, a lot of times in a society that's been decimated, a religion that's been humiliated, people are looking for some kind of greater meaning. And, and there are a lot of people willing to take advantage of them. But in a, in a, in a broader sense, um, what we've done uh, since 9-11, and actually going back well before 9-11, with the unquestioning support for Israel, with the drone bombing campaigns, with the invasions and occupations of countries, with the torture of prisoners around the world, we have projected a message that we are at war with a, a religion. When Rupert Murdoch, the most powerful media figure in the world, goes on Twitter and, and uses the word Muslim, but uh, it, it says that basically all Muslims are to blame for this until they stop it, um, that, though, that's not lost on people around the world. There's, and Bush used the word crusade uh, in, in the early stages of the post-9-11 aftermath. So I'm not saying that any of this is justified as a result of U.S. policy, but if we really want to confront this, we have to understand our own role in legitimizing it.